Okay, so Pi News episode 29. And first up, a continuation from Pi News 28. Uh, so in Pi News 28, I mentioned this MacBook Pi, which I thought was really cool, but I had a comment from Kim Paulson who created it, and uh, they mentioned that they've got a video showing it booting up. What was really interesting is they've got a temperature monitor on the actual keyboard. Now, it looks like it's a bit of paper there at the moment, but uh, I just thought it was a nice touch, and it was something that I hadn't noticed from the original bit. So if I play a tiny bit of it when it zooms in, so you can see the temperature shows up on the keyboard. I just thought it was a nice touch, so I thought I'd mention it in Pi News. And I keep forgetting to mention, I do have a playlist for Pi News, and uh, if you've only seen the later episodes of Pi News, it's, it's worth going back right from the start and uh, checking out some of the episodes and some of the things that have come to the Pi, uh, because obviously if something's not changed, I don't mention it again in Pi News, so there might be something the Pi can do that you haven't realised. Yesterday I got an email from Tony from DeSalvo Systems. Uh, Tony sent me both of these cases to try out in the past. Uh, this is the original DeSalvo Systems solid aluminium case. So these are completely silent. Uh, this is the maker block. I've got separate videos on these, but the next one coming out uh, is called Phineas and it has very large heat sinks on the top and has extremely good cooling on it. And uh, some of the results he's been posting look amazing. I can't wait to get my hands on one. Uh, it looks brilliant as well. Uh, it's always very, very well designed, always incredibly well built. So uh, yeah, I look forward to seeing that in the future. So next up, Twister OS is now one year old uh, and they're doing a giveaway of the Twister OS case. So you've got to join the Discord, all the details are on the Discord, um, but uh, it gives you a chance to, to win one of these really cool cases. I've covered it in Pi News before uh, and they do look great. Twister is still my favorite OS on Raspberry Pi. If you're interested in using your Pi for an audio system, uh, you'll get a lot of great detail from this Reddit post. Uh, so it's a really nice looking system, uh, but also in the comments, there's all sorts of information about what's changed. I've covered this before, but this is an update to it and you can see here. Uh, so the main change between this post and the new improved models is the power supply, uh, but it does look very cool, really nice finish on it. And uh, yeah, really smart project. Next up is this retro TV, uh, and this is a seven inch official Raspberry Pi screen uh, in this box, so you can see made of cardboard. Front plastic is used to magnify a phone normally, so there's a magnifying strip in here to make it up to the bigger size. But uh, yeah, it's just something a little different, and uh, I quite enjoyed that one. Uh, it does look very cool. I'll include a link if you want to watch the whole video and also read about it as well. Also had a very interesting comment on Pi News 28 from Jose. Uh, he's the developer of PyKiss and uh, he's adding 64-bit support, stay tuned. So I'm really pleased about that because the Raspberry Pi OS 64-bit is definitely a better performer than the 32-bit. And uh, obviously if this starts to happen and more things go towards 64-bit, it paves the way for a 64-bit Twister OS, which would be brilliant. Next up is a 3D printed Raspberry Pi case. So almost done with my 3D printed case for my first ever Raspberry Pi. Just need some plexiglass for the window and straighten up the cables a bit. So if we have a look at the close up, so you can see here, it is actually huge uh, as a case, but this does mean that there's possibilities for, uh, I'm thinking more powered USB hubs uh, and also uh, multiple drives in there. Maybe something to swap out drives would be nice as well. Uh, but if we have a look inside, I always like these inside pictures. You can see there's an inlet and an outlet fan. There's a fan in the middle here. Looks to be a display on the front. I don't know if it is this one. Yeah, so there's some sort of display on the front, but obviously it's not plugged in, uh, and so you can't see that, but that looks interesting. Uh, and then on the back, I'm guessing, looking at this, it looks similar to the breakout board I had in a recent video. Uh, which gives you full-size HDMIs and also puts everything on the one side. So it really lends itself to a tower case. So if you're looking to do something similar to this, it's worth having a look at this. Uh, and there's links in there. If you go through all the, uh, the comments and everything, there you go. Probably should have linked this sooner, but I didn't actually make the files. All credit goes to this guy. And so if you want to find out how to make this particular case, you can. All the details will be in there. In fact, I haven't clicked on it. I don't know what that's going to look like. Let's have a look. There you go, so lots of detailed drawings. Uh, I was offered to be sent a 3D printer, but it never came. Uh, yeah, this is, this is great. So you've got a different color variation to the one that was made. Very nice, we've got some LED lights in there as well. 
What's the remote control? So there's a remote control probably for the LED lights, but it looks like it fits underneath it. All sorts of pictures here. Loads of, oh yeah, there you go. So 52 Pi Ice Tower cooler, which is a great cooler. Uh, can be used passively as well, works really well. Although this is gonna be enclosed, so I guess you're gonna need that inlet and outlet fan. But because they're quite large fans, that's gonna mean that uh, they should be quieter because a larger fan doesn't need to spin quite as fast. Oh, lots of details about the GPIO pins in there as well. And the construction. Oh, this is loads of work has gone into this. Look, every, every single panel. And I think the uh, person in the Reddit post had said, yeah, 15 to 20 hours. Uh, I like that. What was your print time on that body? And they go into details about how they did it and everything. It's, it's yeah, it's a really nice post. So next up, I'm being sent uh, from a company called Cytron, uh, these MakerDisc micro SD cards. At the time when they contacted me, they were waiting for approval by the Raspberry Pi Foundation. I guess that's gone through now because they're sending me the cards. Um, but uh, they also are sending me an SSD, which is preloaded with Raspberry Pi OS, and also an M.2 drive, which is preloaded with Raspberry Pi OS. So uh, it'll be really interesting to have a look at those. They sent me some decent speed tests, so I'll be testing it when I get them. Um, but I started looking, because I did a recent video on the Ras Pi key, the EMC drive, which also comes with Raspberry Pi OS. I started thinking about, oh, is it worth me getting a copy of Noobs on an SD card and testing it? But there isn't an official one now, uh, and you can see here on this post, uh, which was uh, November 2020, about noobs being discontinued because there are no downloads of it available. But if you go to Amazon, there are actually uh, cards on there. And I did see this one, preloaded with Windows 10 IoT, but IoT isn't like a proper Windows 10, it's uh, Internet of Things, so like home automation and stuff like that. But I uh, initially I looked at it and thought, oh, someone's selling... Windows 10 on an SD card on Amazon, but they're not. Uh, but if, I, if we go down, this is what the official card used to look like. And I think it had uh, the Raspberry logo on the card as well. So I don't know which ones of these, if any of these, are properly official ones. Because I was just going to get the official one and I was going to speed test it against these new Maker Disk ones. But I can't find one that is standard. And some of them come with branded cards. You can see Kingston card there. Um, and this is the Amazon's Choice one. But it, it's hard to know if it's an officially sanctioned one because Noobs isn't going anymore. As I say, this this does look like the official one, but I can't tell for sure. And some other organisations don't seem to be selling them anymore. Anyway, rather than go with Noobs, I would go with PinOS or Barry Boot anyway because they do it much better. But it's quite nice to have this preloaded option, uh, and especially with Raspberry Pi OS, because I always think you should have a copy of Raspberry Pi OS for updating, for various different things. It's just worth having it on some sort of format. It is a great OS at the end of the day. So I look forward to receiving those. And last up, Ray Anch asked me to check out his version of Raspberry Pi OS. This is PyTosh OS, and it's based on Mac OS 9. So I'm gonna shut down Twister, and I'm gonna reboot, because actually it's pretty cool. Uh, I do like it, it's very well done. So Alt F4. and shut down. Okay, so here it is all booted up and performance has been very good. Uh, it's running from an SD card on my eight gig Pi. Uh, I haven't overclocked or anything like that. And uh, it feels nice and snappy because it's based on Raspberry Pi OS 32 bit. Uh, it's mentioned in the comments that uh, if people want a 64 bit version, then uh, they'll look into that. And it's also got Pi Apps and Pi Kiss pre-installed, which are essentials on a Raspberry Pi, I always think. Uh, now one thing that's mentioned in the description as well is expanding the partition. So if I click on the search bar down the bottom here and start typing in Gparted, you can see it comes up so I can launch that. And you'll see that the installation doesn't expand the operating system partition which is this one, ext4. So if we click on this, right click and resize and then just drag it all the way across, hit resize and then tick, and that will apply all the operations. There you go, all operations successfully completed, so I can close that down. And uh, if I go to the file system, for instance, uh, it should show me that I've got, yes, yeah, so a 22.7 gig space. And I like all the folders and everything. 
So I didn't run this operating system. I definitely came to Macs much later than this. I had used them a lot before it uh, in some offices where my wife had worked at the time just to play Lemmings. Uh, I didn't really use it as an operating system. But Mac OS 9 came out in 1999. And so about that time, obviously we had Windows 98. Uh, we had Windows Millennium, which was released after Mac OS 9. Uh, and they do have a similar sort of feel to them. Uh, you know, the, the way the fonts are and things like that. It's they're not too dissimilar, um, but it's not a system that I kind of remember using. So let's have a look at what comes uh, already on there. I think it's pretty much all the standard Raspberry Pi OS things. So we can click on the Apple logo at the top here, uh, and you can see we've got Terminal, File Manager, Mail Reader, Web Browser, which is Chromium. We've got all our settings here as well, with all the icons have been changed. Accessories, uh, so things like Raspberry Pi Diagnostics, so we can speed test. PyApps PyKiss, which I mentioned before, development, education, graphics, image viewer. Yeah, most most of it is what would come. Oh, we got Firefox as well. And Dillo, is that a web browser? I'll have a look at that in a minute. Uh, media player, VLC is on there as well. So let's go back and see what Dillo is. Web browser, free software. Okay, so it's a web browser. But let's use, let's try Firefox and see what that's like. And I can search for it on this bar again. So Firefox and open that. Took me a while to get used to the uh, open and close things. So this closes an app. Uh, this one minimizes it and this one puts it in the tray. There you go. So if I do a quick search, Hot UK Deals. I mean, the performance, I'm guessing, is just going to be like uh, Raspberry Pi OS's which is very good. Yeah, so it looks like it's pretty good. Uh, let's open that up. Yeah, happy with that. So we have a readme on the desktop, what does that say? Oh, there you go, 32-bit with XFCE as its desktop environment, Mac OS 9 theme, useful pre-installed apps, PyKiss, PyApps, Flameshot, Gparted and more. I'll put a link to Ray Anch's, uh, YouTube on my channel and you get the download from the description in that video. So I won't put a direct link, I'll, I'll direct you to that video so you can download it from there. And I just use Raspberry Pi Imager to write it and that worked fine. Terminal I guess is gonna look the same. Uh, there's File Manager, but there's also this one like a quick quick launch. Be nice to see those have a, a different artwork on them so you can, you can tell the two apart, but uh, that's only a minor thing. Up the top here we've got, we've got shutdown options, we've got our Bluetooth options, our internet, our audio options as well. Yeah, so great work. Anyway, I hope all this helps. Thanks very much for watching. Please like and subscribe.